Hey there .NET devs, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today we're going to be talking about data sheets, specifically looking at I squared C peripherals and figuring out what their addresses are. On your journey of IoT development, you're inevitably going to run across peripherals. You're going to need to talk to them. And a common one is an I squared C. I squared C is the bus or the communication with these. It stands for inter-integrated circuit uh, and it is a two wire bus. One of the features of the I squared C bus is that it only has two wires, but you may have multiple devices. And so each one must have a target address that is unique to that device. We're going to look at how you figure out what the uh, address is, how you can change that on some chips, and how you figure all of that out from the data sheet. Let's start with a really simple example. This is a DS1307 real-time clock. It has a single address. But let's go take a look at the data sheet so we can understand how we know that and where we can find that address. If I pull down this data sheet, and it will be different in every data sheet you come across. Generally, you'll look for a section on I squared C or I squared C addressing, something along those lines. Here we've got a register, so that means we're getting close. Oftentimes it will be hidden in the timing diagrams like it is right here. So if you take a look at this diagram, and I'm going to zoom in, right here at the very beginning it has the slave address field. The address is a 7-bit field, not 8. It has 7 bits, and then the 8th bit that follows is whether or not you're doing a read or write but that eighth bit does not figure into the address when you're addressing it via uh, most software. So in this case, you can see it has a hard-coded address, 110-1000. So if I pull up calculator and I go to binary and I do 110-1000, seven bits, that is a hex 68. So that would be the address for this. And let's just confirm that. Let's come over to the driver for the 1307 in Meadow, and you can see the address is 68. Now let's go look at something just slightly more complex. Here is a BME 680. This is a, as you can see by the data sheet, a gas pressure temperature uh, sensor. Let's say we have one of these that we want to hook up. Let's see if we can find, of course it does not have a table of contents here, but we can come down and look, sensor usage, configuration, again, there we go, that's what I want to look for. And it looks like the I squared C interfaces at page 35. Now we're going to look for something that has to do with addresses and again, you can see here we have the slave address in this timing diagram. Actually, I guess this is in a packet diagram, but you can see that it is fixed for the first six, and then it has this X. And this X, you can see, it is determined by the state of an SDO pin. So if I pull one of these devices out, and I can't get it close enough to the camera where it will focus, so what I'll do is I'll just try to put a picture of this here, but it has a single pin on it labeled SDO. And that one, if we pull it up to the voltage we're powering it with, it will make this address bit a one. If we pull it down, it will be a zero. So again, let's pull up the calculator and take a look at what that looks like. Triple one, oh, one, one. So if we tie that to ground, we have an address of 76. And if we tie it to voltage, we have a 77. That's in hex. So let's go take a look at the driver, just for sanity. The BME680, you can see, can have an address of 76 or 77 hex. Let's move up the complexity uh, scale here. Let's look at this MCP960, uh, I think 9602 is the common one. First, let's see if we can find the address table. 
So here it is. And in this little uh, addressing diagram, you can see that it has three address lines instead of just the one. It's got an A0, A1, and A2. So we have three bits of adjustable address, and then the uh, four high bits are fixed, 1100. So let's look at the lowest address, 1100, and then we could follow it with three zeros for our lowest address. That is a hex 60, or it could be followed by three ones, so a hex 67. So it can be anywhere in the range from 60 to 67. Let's take a look at the driver and see if that squares 60 through 67. Again, hex. So we're starting to understand this. Let's verify our knowledge with one last one, and it is probably one of the more complex examples that you'll run into. Here's the PCT2075. You can see on this, it has three address lines, A01 and 2, just like that uh, previous chip, but this one behaves slightly differently. Let's see if it's got a table of contents. I squared C bus interface, uh, target address, there we go. This one's interesting. You can see that we've got the three address pins, but they can either be zero, which is pulled to ground. They can be a one, which is pulled to voltage, or it can be just left floating, so not connected to anything. So basically we have three different states on three different pins which gives us, according to this, 27 potential addresses. And so you can see that the addresses, it isn't, you know, a fixed number, but then attached with those three bits. It is, you know, these three equate to a target address. And I'm sure there's some algorithm that you could figure out that would do this, but they have a nice table that looks it up. So we have... Triple zero gives us this address. 1001 triple O. Which is hex 48. Down to all floating. Is 37. So let's go take a look at the driver. from 48 down to uh, 37, again, hex. Now, it's got a bunch of different ones, so we've got as low as 28 and as high as 77, it looks like. So there's a wide array. The basic idea here is that every device must have a unique address on the bus. And so if you have multiple devices, you want to make sure that no two devices collide or share the same address. And therefore, they allow you in many cases to adjust the address in case that there are two devices that may have the same address. It allows you to do some configuration of your hardware to your needs. That's all I've got for today. Hopefully you find it useful. Thanks for watching.